tale takes us deep into the darkest corners of the internet, where whispers of a cursed game spread like wildfire through online forums and chat rooms. They called it The Grimoire, a text-based role-playing game shrouded in mystery and whispered rumors of misfortune and despair. Legend had it that the game was the creation of a reclusive programmer, a digital recluse who had poured his darkest fears and obsessions into its code. But something went wrong. The game, once intended as harmless entertainment, became corrupted, twisted by an unknown force, its code taking on a life of its own. Rumors spread like wildfire through the online gaming community, tales of players experiencing strange phenomena, their real lives mirroring the events of the game with chilling accuracy. Some claimed to have lost fortunes, their in-game losses translating into real-world financial ruin. Others whispered of broken relationships, accidents, even disappearances, all linked to the game's malevolent influence. The game, it seemed, had a way of reaching out from the screen, of blurring the lines between the virtual and the real with terrifying consequences. Despite the chilling tales, curiosity got the better of many, drawn to the game's mystique like moths to a flame. Among them were two friends, Mark and Lucas, avid gamers with a penchant for the strange and unusual. They stumbled upon the grimoire on a hidden forum, its download link buried beneath layers of cryptic messages and warnings. Intrigued and perhaps a little foolish, they decided to download the game, eager to experience its mysteries firsthand. As they installed the game, a sense of unease settled over them, the computer screen flickering erratically, the room growing noticeably colder. Ignoring the warning signs, they launched the game, its opening screen a jumble of distorted text and disturbing imagery that seemed to writhe and pulsate before their eyes. A single line of text appeared on the screen, its message chilling in its simplicity, Welcome to the Grimoire. You have been warned. Undeterred, Mark and Lucas created their characters, their avatars appearing on the screen as pixelated representations of themselves, their features strangely distorted, their eyes glowing with an unnatural light. The game world was a dark and unforgiving place, a labyrinth of shadowy forests and crumbling ruins populated by grotesque creatures and malevolent entities. As they progressed through the game, they couldn't shake the feeling that they were being watched, their every move scrutinized by an unseen presence. Strange things began to happen. This is something that happened to me when I was much younger. I believe I was about 11 or 12 during this time. I lived at home with my older brother and my parents. One of my favorite things to do after school most days was to unwind by playing some video games. I would go upstairs to my bedroom and start playing on my PlayStation 2 for a while. Sometimes, I would play all the way until it was time for dinner. So, one day I got home from school and went straight up to my bedroom to play some video games. Both my parents were still at work, and my brother was still at school. That's how things usually were for an hour or two after I got back on most days. I remember playing video games, and a little while in, I heard my brother getting home downstairs. The front door opened and closed, and I heard him walk inside. I thought nothing of it and I kept gaming. But about an hour later, I got a call from my mom. I had a home phone in my bedroom and saw through the caller ID that it was my mom's cell phone. When I answered, she told me that she was on her way to pick up my brother from his friend's house and they would be home soon. My dad was going to pick up some food on the way home from work and she wanted to know what I wanted. I told her whatever food it was that I was in the mood for that night. Then we said bye, and I hung up. It was only after ending the call that I realized it was strange that my brother was not home. If he was at a friend's house, then who had I heard entering our house? My heart started racing, and I had a terrible feeling. 
I carefully walked to my bedroom door and opened it up. I had never heard the person walking upstairs or near my bedroom. I didn't know where they went after entering the house. So, after not hearing or seeing anything, I left my bedroom. I quietly walked down the hallway and looked downstairs. I still saw nothing. Then I went down the stairs. Once there, I walked around the main level of the house looking. I did not see anybody, but when I was near the kitchen in kind of the front door, I heard a noise coming from the basement. It sounded like somebody was down there. I quickly ran away and went back upstairs to my bedroom. A short time after entering my room, I heard the front door to the house open and close again. At that point, I ran back downstairs. When I got to the front door, I saw what looked like a man walking away down the street. I didn't recognize him and only saw him for like two seconds. It might not have been the same guy who had been in the house, but I think it was. I then locked all the doors and called my parents, who then called the police. The door had been left unlocked for when my brother got home. I hadn't known he was going to a friend's house. Looking back, I can't believe it happened. I didn't even know I was home alone with some random guy downstairs. I'm really glad that he didn't go near my bedroom. This happened when I was like 16 and in my heavy gaming phase, still living with my parents. I played a lot of League of Legends in my room on my computer in those days, especially in the summertime when it's so unbearably hot outside and I preferred to stay inside in the air conditioning. Anyway, way back when I lived at home, I'd have the place to myself a lot because my parents traveled a lot and I was the last one to move out. If I recall correctly, this was on a Friday night or a night that school was out the next day because I was staying up late. After I got home from school, I submitted a paper that was due that night to get it over with. Then, I had to do some shopping afterward on my mom's orders since they'd be gone for a while. It was how I earned my keep in the house, according to my dad. They left cash for me to use. I always had to show them the receipt though so that I wouldn't just pocket any of the money. My mom gave me a shopping list, so I went to Whole Foods in my old Camry, my first car. Shopping took about an hour. While in the grocery store, this guy in line behind me started talking to me, and I don't know why. He made a comment about one of the things I was buying and just wouldn't stop, even as I was bagging my groceries. He kept talking to me, which I found weird. He wasn't paying attention to anyone else. I was still nice though. When it was time to leave, I said, have a good one, and left. I went out to my car in the parking lot, packed the trunk, then headed home. It was a scorching hot day as we were in early June. I wasn't looking to go out and do anything outside. Once I was done with everything I needed to do, it was dark out by now, so I got right on League of Legends on my computer and texted my friend David to get on as well. He joined my party, and we played some dual rank as we always did. I was using my noise-canceling headset. We were committed already to playing League of Legends all night and ranking up, so of course, I needed to take a break to make dinner at some point. Probably two hours into playing, I told David I was going to eat dinner and I'd probably be back on in an hour. He said he'd be back on later too. So with that, I took a break and made some pasta for dinner. The kitchen is downstairs, and my room is upstairs. While I was sitting in the kitchen eating, I knew for sure I heard a thump from upstairs. Did it sound like a footstep? I wasn't sure. It could have been any number of things, but the last thing I'd imagine it would be was a footstep. I did, however, go and lock the front door. Now, oftentimes for a while, I would leave the door unlocked just because my parents' house is in a good side of town, 
and I just never took the idea of a break-in seriously. It's something you hear about on the news but don't think it'll ever happen to you. I went upstairs, and I don't know what I was expecting, but I said my brother Tristan's name into the hallway. I knew he wasn't supposed to be here, but I don't know, I heard a sound and I felt the urge to see if anyone was here. When no one answered back, I went back to my room and got back on League of Legends. I put my headset back on and texted David that I'm going back on. Shortly after, he came back on. We started playing again. A couple of games in, I looked to my left at the doorway of my room into the hallway. I don't know if something in my peripheral vision or some other sense felt something there, but I would leave the door open when I was home alone as my mom would tell me to. The hallway was dark except for the one little nightlight plugged into an outlet. My room shone blue from my wall lights. Some of the blue poured into the part of the hallway closest to my room. In between the crack of the door was total blackness. I couldn't see through it. I didn't think anything of it. After our next game, David said he was taking a leak and walked away. While we were in the lobby, I looked at my phone, then looked back out to the hallway, and I noticed something was different. Now I could see through the crack of the door into the hallway. My first thought was, was someone blocking it just minutes ago? By instinct, I spun my chair around to face the bed behind me, and there was a man sitting on my bed with his freakishly upright posture and his hands resting on his thighs. He almost looked to be smiling. I was so alarmed I jumped out of my seat onto the desk and crawled onto the desk, causing my monitor and basically everything else to fall off of it. I screamed, what do you want? And he started to actually smile now, showing his teeth like he was laughing. I ran out of the room into the hallway. I stopped halfway down the hallway and looked back at my bedroom door. I heard the springs of my bed lifting, and then the guy slowly walked into the doorway and stopped. He stood there. I once again yelled, what do you want? He then spoke in a stuttered, slow voice, asking if he could play too. I asked, how did you get in here? He stepped a few steps forward and pointed down the stairs. I assumed he was implying he entered through the front door. I was at a loss for what to do, so I ran down the stairs to the landline phone, as my cell phone was still in my room. I grabbed the phone and a kitchen knife and screamed, you need to leave. I'm calling 911. I heard footsteps walking down the steps, and the last time I saw the guy was when he walked past the kitchen, looked at me and then I heard him walking out the front door. I ran to slam it shut and lock it. For the first time ever, I was ashamed of myself for leaving the door completely unlocked. I held the phone for a few minutes, deciding whether to tell my parents. Ultimately, I did. My mom was concerned at first, then grew livid, so much so to the point that she put my dad on the phone. He told me to go through the house and make sure nothing was taken. I went through every room, and honestly, everything seemed in place. I said the man seemed like something was off about him. The man didn't seem overtly hostile, but something was wrong with him, and I don't know what his intention was. The image of him sitting on my bed and the realization that he was watching me through the crack in the door was haunting enough. A few years ago, I used to play video games and stream them online. I was not really popular or anything I just did it for fun. I would stream on Twitch for my friends, and usually anywhere from one to three or four of them would watch. Sometimes they would play with me in the games as well. Every now and then a few other random people would watch the stream too, but I never got more than like 10 viewers at once. I wasn't trying to become famous or anything. One night, I was streaming Fortnite. 
It was almost a nightly thing for me to do at the time. I was playing with my friend Luck, who was also watching the stream. I remember that at one point, I saw there was another viewer, and soon the new viewer started talking in the chat and leaving comments. I did not recognize the username to be any of my friends, and I realized it was a new person. I said hi to them and welcomed them to the stream. The person responded, saying hi, but a short time later, their comments turned bad. It started with basic insults, calling me names and cursing at me. I assumed it to be some teenage kid just messing around on a Twitch account. I remember asking on the stream why he was so angry. My friend was thinking that it was really funny, though. The comments then got threatening. The user said something like they were going to find me and they knew where I lived or something along those lines. Obviously, I didn't take the threat very seriously. I really had no idea why they would act this way because my stream was always pretty fun and lighthearted. The first comment the person made that really raised my eyebrows, though, was when they mentioned my real name. They said they knew my name, and when I asked what it was, the user commented it. This shocked me because my name was not my username or anything, and this person knew my last name as well. It was then that I figured it had to be one of my friends messing with me, and that's what Luck thought as well. I remember Luck asking who it was, going through a list of friends that he thought it could be. The person denied it all. After going back and forth for a bit, the person eventually left, and I ended the stream a short time later. But the very next night, the person was back. I went back on what I usually did and was playing Fortnite again. Luck also joined, and it was just the two of us like the night prior. Well, maybe 30 minutes into the stream, the mystery person returned. They started commenting again, picking up right where they left off, but this time they said they were going to my house. I was kind of like, okay, buddy, let's see it, and still not taking it seriously. They went quiet in the chat for a while, but then out of nowhere, the person commented that they were at my house. Then I heard this loud knocking coming from the front door. I lived in a house that I rented with a roommate during this time. My roommate was gone at work, and I was at home by myself. After I heard the knocking, I told Luck about it, who seemed shocked. This definitely had to be a friend, I said. I was getting up and went over to go look. After leaving my bedroom and starting to enter the living room, I could see somebody through the front window. There was a man standing on the front step who was wearing all black and a ski mask. He did not resemble any of my friends, but I guess it could have been one of them. I just had a bad feeling about it, though, like this was somebody else. I went back into my bedroom and asked the guy through my stream what he wanted. He did not respond to this but loudly knocked again on the front door. I was not going to answer it. The mysterious man then made a comment that he hated my car. I don't know why he said this, but then he left the stream. I really had no idea as to what was going on. Me and Luck talked about who it could be, and I told him that I thought it was someone totally random. Luck was telling me that I should go out and confront the guy. Eventually, I left my bedroom to go check, but the guy was gone now. I looked out of every window and didn't see him. Well, the next day, I was leaving for work. When I got to my car in the driveway, there was a big dent in the driver's door, like somebody had hit it with something. I remembered the comment the guy made about hating my car, which is a Pontiac Aztec. Now I knew none of my friends would go so far as to damage my vehicle. After that, I decided to stop streaming for a while. I told all my friends about it, and like I expected, none of them knew who it could be. It remains a mystery to me to this day. I don't live in that house anymore. 
I did stream on Twitch again a while after it happened, but the guy never joined another stream or at least never said anything. This is one of the craziest things that's ever happened to me. At night, I like to play video games as a hobby quite a bit. This is my scariest experience while doing so. I remember that I was playing online on some game with random people. I had a headset and would talk to them. Most of you know that in online gaming, people sometimes say some crazy stuff, but on this night, it seemed pretty tame. I remember towards the end, shortly before I would go to bed, I was starting to get tired. I was playing this one game with basically just one other person. It was a man, and we were talking about the game over our headsets. During the game, I remember he asked me some somewhat personal questions. I didn't think too much of it and figured that he was just making conversation. The things he asked me were what my name was, to which I only gave my first name, and where I was from. I only told him my state, and I'm pretty sure I asked him the same questions back, but I honestly don't remember his answers. There wasn't anything really that creeped me out or anything. There were maybe a few more questions, but nothing that stood out. I remember that after a while, I got tired, and I told him that I was getting off. I do remember him asking why, and I said that I was going to bed. Afterwards, he sent me a friend request on the game, which was not a big deal. But it was either the following day or the day after that, he sent me a friend request on Facebook. I did not know it at the time, though. When I would go on Facebook, I would accept most friend requests unless it was clearly a bot. This guy appeared real, and I accepted it, not knowing who he was at all. He started to message me a short time later. I remember he said hi and asked me what I was doing and stuff as if we were friends. I asked him who he was and he responded, saying we had played video games together a few days earlier. That's when I realized this had to be the same guy. Obviously, I had no idea what the guy looked like. When I heard this, I was surprised that he had found me on Facebook. I never told him my last name or the city that I was from. It kind of creeped me out. Plus, based on the guy's page and photos, he did seem pretty weird. I decided at that point to delete him as a friend. But the day after that, the guy followed me on Instagram. He then started messaging me there. He asked me why I deleted him and sent me like four other messages. When I saw them, I deleted and blocked him from Instagram as well. I thought that was the end of it, but a couple of days later, I got a text message from him out of nowhere. An unknown number texted me. When I looked, I figured it was a wrong number until the texter said their name, and it was a long, angry text about how I blocked him and stuff. This creeped me out more than anything. I blocked his number and hoped that I would stop hearing from him. Obviously, I deleted him from being friends on the game as well. After this, I did stop hearing from him. I still wonder, though, how he found me. I mean, the only thing he had to go off of was my first name and state. How did he find my number? My only thought is that he possibly messaged somebody who knew me on Facebook, claiming that he was my friend and wanted to know my number or something. I never asked around, so I can't confirm it, though. Either way, it's really creepy what he did, and I'm glad that I haven't heard from him since.